Welcome to the Managing Conflict course, brought to you by Project Grow. Let's get started. As we live and work under increased economic and political pressures, conflict is inevitable. As a soybean farmer, conflict might arise in any number of places, with your employees in the daily management of your operation, with bankers when you're securing financing for new equipment, and even with your family. Considering the many different personalities, goals, and opinions of those around us, Learning how to handle conflict appropriately and in a timely manner is key to maintaining a healthy environment at home, work, and in our community. Today, we'll look at a few basic truths about conflict, talk about the four common causes of conflict, three common reactions to conflict, and most importantly, five steps to manage conflict when it arises. As we said, conflict is inevitable. If you interact with people, you will have some degree of conflict at some point in time. Rather than manage disputes and disagreements in a positive manner, it is easy to react to conflict on a purely emotional level or to avoid it altogether. Not managing conflict effectively can take a negative toll on our professional and personal lives. Conflict is not necessarily a bad thing. It can be helpful in making necessary changes. Most people fear dealing with conflict and work very hard to avoid it. In fact, because it is normal and a natural part of our lives, handled in the right way, conflict is actually beneficial. It is through conflict that awareness for necessary changes can be brought to light. What causes conflict? There are four common causes out of which most conflicts arise. Poor communication, unclear goals and expectations, differing personalities, and contrasting opinions. Poor communication. Most times we believe our message is being transferred or translated accurately, when in fact it may not be. Subjected to personal interpretation, miscommunication leads to conflict. Conflict arises when we blame others for not being clear or for our lack of understanding of their message. When individuals work with different sets of information, it can create tension and lead to misunderstanding and anger. Unclear goals and expectations. When goals and expectations are not clear, this can lead to conflict and impede successful completion of a task. When someone decides to pursue his or her own goals without regard to the overall objective, conflict is present. Conflict may occur when an individual focuses on achieving his or her own objectives. They may forget about being part of a team in which the goal is to work together for a common objective. Consequently, resentment builds and conflict is the outcome. Differing personalities. No two people are exactly alike. Therefore, personality clashes are unavoidable. Some individuals are introverted personalities, while others may be more extroverted. Problems can arise when we do not take the time to understand or respect these characteristics. For instance, the more outgoing person may feel slighted if a quieter one doesn't talk very much. It might be perceived as a slight rather than simply being the employee's personality. When we do not understand and respect each other's approach, conflict occurs. Conflicting opinions. We all form opinions based on our knowledge and perceptions. Problems can arise between people with different opinions. Often, debates result as both sides attempt to show that the other side is in error. Usually, both sides refuse to budge in their opinion and generally the argument moves each further into their own corners. Yet, we continue to speak more loudly, with more force, thinking this will persuade the other party to see the error of their ways and move into our correct point of view. Of course, this method only serves to do the opposite. We struggle to realize that moving toward the center is not a sign of weakness, but of strength. The ability to compromise, to seek middle ground results in a win-win situation. Unhealthy dealing with conflict usually takes one of three methods. Avoidance. If we ignore it, the problem will go away. Or, it's just too hard to face the potential conflict. So we don't. Attack. Scream loud enough, intimidate your opponent, and you'll get your way. Accommodation. This sort of feels like compromise, but really, it is giving in and letting go of what is important to you. None of these three are productive or healthy ways to achieve a successful result. So then, how do we manage conflict? Let's look at a five-step process for managing conflict through collaboration. In order, these steps are stepping back, listening with empathy, asking permission to state your point of view, finding alternatives, and gaining agreement. Depending on the nature of your conflict, each step might take more or less time, but following these five steps sequentially will improve your ability to achieve a positive outcome. Let's take a look at each in a bit more detail. Step one, step out of the situation. 
Often, it's not the situation, but the perspective on the situation that causes anger to fester and leads to a shouting match, leaving the situation worse than before you began. The old adage, count to ten, applies here. You cannot be objective or rational if emotions are getting in the way. Step back, cool off, and get an objective basis for the conflict. Emotion can reduce objectivity and increase defensiveness. It is the fuel that perpetuates ineffective conflict resolution. It helps when you step out of your emotions and try for a moment to step into the other's point of view. This will provide perspective and allow you to diffuse not only your emotions, but also the other parties as well, and move towards agreement. Step two, listen with empathy. Once you've pulled yourself out of the emotional vortex, listen to the other person. Stephen Covey says, seek to understand before trying to be understood. It doesn't mean you have to agree with their opinion, but really listen and respond with comments to ensure they know that you are trying to understand their situation and emotion. Repeat back what they have said to ensure correct interpretation by saying things like, what I'm hearing you say is, or it seems that your primary concern is. Ask clarifying questions and find things to agree on. Don't try explaining your perspective or understanding. Just listen and clarify until you've heard all they have to say. Step three, ask permission to state your point of view. Now that you've listened with empathy, start by saying something like this. I know that we have our differences and I have heard your issues and concerns. Our opinions are different, but it's important that we find common ground. Do you agree? If the person says yes, then you can share your point of view and perspectives and feelings. As you move through your talking points, you may be the one who asks the questions to ensure your own message is being understood. Keep your emotions in check. This is not the negotiation phase, it is the clarification stage. If the person starts to argue with your words, gently remind them that you heard them and you'd appreciate if you could fully speak what's on your mind too. Before moving on to stage four, get agreement that resolution is needed and that you both will work to come to that point together. By the way, if the person says no, you must move back to step two and try again. If that doesn't work, you may have to move on to an unbiased third party to act as a moderator between the two parties. Step four, find common ground in potential solutions and look for alternatives. After getting each party's viewpoint on the conflict, the next step is to get each to identify how the situation could be changed. Brainstorm ideas of how you can come up with a win-win situation, understanding this will require compromise. Once you have calmly looked at the possibilities to benefit both sides, look for those solutions that provide the greatest common good. Step five, get agreement. Agree on the next steps you both will put in place, not only to see this situation to a successful end, but to prevent conflicts from arising in the future. Also, determine to handle future conflicts in this manner. If conflicts are handled with a satisfactory outcome, the relationship will deepen and positive change will take place. The next time a conflict arises, there will be a positive path to a successful resolution. Finally, once you've reached agreement, move on. Let the conflict go so it doesn't bubble up again in the future. Conflict is inevitable, but following these five steps will help you be more effective in resolving it. Thank you for your time and attention. This concludes the Managing Conflict training course, brought to you by Project Grow.